um, uh, so if, if we were going to try to push more calls through asterisk, a next step would be to change Zaptel architecture quite a bit. And um, that is something that, you know, it, it can be done and, you know, if somebody would like to do that, that's possible. Um, and the, I guess the stage two is also memory map the, um, the uh, memory so it goes directly into the asterisk. Um, so what we have done is, um, it, in the, the picture would look something like this. So let's say on a T3 system, if we had a T3 system and we wanted to push for all T3 600 channels, uh, we would have something like, it would only equate to 28 kernel devices. So that's much, much uh, better now and a kernel would have no problem handling that data. Um, and, um, um, but the, the, the point is that one would have to have that span channelization inside of Chan's app in asterisk. Um, so this is kind of like a brief overview of, of kind of where, where asterisk was in the beginning and where we have taken it so far to this level today. Um, we don't have this component, but um, asterisk is able to run now you know, echo cancellation is not a problem anymore. intra upload is not really a problem anymore. Um, and we, you know, we have customers that scale like two eight port cards in a system, which is 200 calls uh, with Asterix without any problems. So, um, you know, and you know, we, we like Asterix a lot. You know, it works very, very well. And, and as long as you use Asterix for what it's meant to do, it works very well. You know, and I don't agree with people that come in and say, well, you know, Asterix doesn't work really well. Well, you don't know how to use it then, right? You, you have to use it in specs that it provides. You cannot, you know, you got to use the right tool for the job. So, um, and that's what we have done. And we have, um, what we have gone the next step is to try to, not to ask Asterix to do too much. The point is use many Asterix boxes to solve your job. You know, don't try to ask single asterisk box to do all the work for you. So, we've came up with a few years ago. Um, I was at the conference and um, Craig Sutherland from Opal started talking about this protocol, Woomera. And um, I had no idea what it was about. But uh, Woomera really is just a, another signaling abstraction. And, um, um, what I saw with it, with it, one can actually decouple the uh, TDM hardware from asterisk. Now, you know, that's, that's a concept, like right now, if everything is, you know, Zappel and it's very tight on the sing single machine, you cannot really decouple the, the TDM hardware from asterisk. But using the Woomera channel, one can actually move a single asterisk box and split it in two and have one, an asterisk with SIP on one machine and just the hardware that this, the part, the component that uses so much, the, the, the most CPU on another machine. And, and, and without any extra configuration, like zero configuration changes to move, to separate asterisk and uh, TDM hardware into two machine. So, and, and that profoundly changes like the architecture of asterisk because well, actually, really, it doesn't change from the, the, the user point of view. It changes nothing because he still has a dial plan. He still has a channel that he dials on. The only thing is that he doesn't know that that channel is actually not on the same machine. Um, so again, the reason why we're doing this is a response to a business need. We had customers that uh, coming. With, we had an SS7 solution, and the SS7 really changes the the um, the architecture of the TDM. You know, PRI is. You know, if we, if we had to do this for PRI, you would probably never do it. But uh, uh, because PRI, you have 24 channels or 31 channels, and then you have one uh, D channel for every associated for every span. So, um, but in SS7, you would have one D channel that controls hundreds, you know, even a thousand of uh, single of, of voice channels. And, and, and then the architecture of really of Zaptel kind of kind of doesn't work in that case because, you know, we cannot serve like thousands of calls on the same machine. Um, so, um, what is Woomera protocol? Well, it's, a, it's really a signaling protocol based on TCP IP and um, the media go travels over UDP. Um, and this is what it looks like. So, as you can see from the previous diagram, we have actually removed Chan's app and we've stuck in this called thing called Chan Woomera. So 
it becomes uh, an abstracted, really, an abstracted API to anything, any signaling protocol. And um, uh, so we, and it talks in its own language, you know, and uh, I'm just going to go back to the next slide just real quick. And it has this like, hello, call, hang up, listen, accept, answer, DTMF, bye. It looks similar, right? This thing called SIP that does the same thing. And, um, but it's not. And, and there's a very specific reason why we did this. We, we were 100% aware that SIP does, SIP looks like this, but this is much, much lighter and, and it's way, way less complicated. Um, and uh, we never, from day one, we said this is not a replacement for SIP and would never be. Uh, this is just an abstraction uh, to a TDM or any other protocol. So a, a simple negotiation of a, of a Woomera would be, you know, a, a, a client would connect to a server and say hello. The server would say hello. I'm a server this and this. I can support uh, BRI. I can support PRI. I can support SS7. I can support SIP. I can support whatever protocol you want. And um, at that point, the client would say, based on the dial plan, the dial plan would say place a call into the from the uh, Woomera client into the server, and the server would magically route that call to whatever protocol was necessary and send back the client a UDP stream of voice. So that's all it cares about. It just, just give me the voice stream. I don't care how you make the call. I really don't care what protocol you're using. I just want the, 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 um, the stream of voice. Um, so th this kind of architecture actually presents what I really liked about this architecture is the object-oriented model. At this point is that I can make you know, I can make my server super stable, small, compact, debug at once. And I have a, and then I can also do the same thing for the asterisk channel module. And once I debug it once, I don't have to, let's say I wanted to go ahead and, and update, grab a new, let's say, a new card, or let's say I want to add a BRI card, for example. Well, I don't change a single line of code in asterisk, because that part has already been debugged. You know, and um, if I want to make a Woomera just an API for a customer to run an API on, you know, I can give a, a properly documented API, and you know, I kill the two two birds with one stone there. So let's uh, dive in a little more and see what it looks like. So as we talked about, uh, we're actually in process of writing an RFC for the Woomera protocol, and um, it's a joint project. It's a project from Opal side. Uh, uh, Craig Sutherland from Opal is, has written a Woomera interface for all of his SIP H323 T38 um, stacks, and I have written the uh, um, Woomera server for our TDM hardware for the SS7, uh, BRI, and PRI. So, moving on. So this is something. Um, this is our SS7 architecture. It just gives you one possibility of how to use this uh, uh, Woomera. Uh, interface. So, uh, if you think about the, we have our TDM cards uh, on the bottom, um, standard B channels and D channels, and uh, the voice goes through the media gateway. Uh, for so, and the if I can maybe actually do it this way, you can see my. So the voice stream would pass through the uh, TDM API. Now, um, you know, one can use Zaptel here if they want it. Uh, we have a, uh, our own uh, um, Zaptel-like kernel module that does um, uh, channelization of all channels, and it's pretty cool because you can actually open up a channel and say, I want 20 milliseconds, or open up a channel and say, I want 10 milliseconds, or I want 30 milliseconds. So the, the, the how much media you get is actually configurable per channel. Um, and other cool things like give me hardware DTMF or don't give me hardware DTMF or um, do tone detection or, you know, so you get to use all these uh, cool things in hardware uh, using this uh, API. Um, so uh, the media gateway, which is this piece, really acts as like a Woomera server on one end and then the signal translator on the other. And on the bottom here is the media engine that actually grabs the media from the hardware and then passes it to asterisk. Um, and on this side, we, we actually, on the SS7 side, we have our own SS7 stack that we've implemented. Um, and um, this is all production level code that works quite well. So let's, uh, we can just maybe take a call through and see how the call, uh, 